The Darth Retro Podcast is a free-flowing conversation that occasionally touches on intelligent subjects, but mostly just sports, music, and life. And now, here is your adorable host, Tom Wagner. And welcome back to part two of this episode three of this Darth Retro Podcast. It's once again kind of a cloudy, kind of mostly cloudy day here in the old Fargo, North Dakota. Alright, um, well, for topics, um, I'm going to continue on with what I um, wanted to do for part one, but due to time, um, I decided to put the music topic onto the second part. So we're going to do a little and talk a little bit about some, about some music, uh, some, a little bit about the Dwight Howard trade over this past weekend. Uh, let's see. And then the Packers. Packers played um, the Chargers for preseason week one. So we're going to be talking a little bit about that. And um, also with my role in life. I guess I kind of figured out how... Well, I think I, figure I figured out what my role in life has become. What the meaning of life for for me is supposed to be. So, uh, let's uh, get started, I suppose. And I'm pretty sure you're pretty much uh, wondering why why this guy hasn't been talking about music yet at all since the first episode of the Darth Retro podcast. But why 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 is he talking about it right now? But um, well, it's well, basically my life um changed, I think, for pretty much the better uh, about 10 years ago when I was in 8th uh, grade. Um, it's, well, it's been about almost 10 years since I really got into listening to music and you know all that kind of stuff but it's basically before that I really didn't pay attention much to the music. I, I was pretty much in the unknown when it comes to the music that I know today as of like right now, which is August 12th of 2012. Um, but basically the first um, artist that I ever really got into about 10 years ago was um, the Moody Blues. It was it was from their greatest hit album called um, This is the Moody Blues. Uh, it was a CD that had basically pretty much most of their greatest hits from 1967 to 19, 1972. So basically from their progressive rock years, back when progressive rock was kind of more... Um, kind of more not into like or- orchestral um, sounds. I think basically um, the Moody Blues were basically kind of one of those bands that really brought orchestra into into the um, the mix of rock and roll. You know, there 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 have certainly been bands that you know, used string quartets and orchestras to use their music, but but to use it like for for so many years, the the Moody Blues pretty much are second to, second to none when it comes to orchestra rock. Um, I think you can probably also say that Electric Light Orchestra is definitely right up there. Um, uh, I guess maybe Al- Atlanta Rhythmic or- Orchestra too, or you know all that kind of stuff. But um, the the first song I ever listened to on that song that CD was uh, called um, um, Tuesday Afternoon because but that was because I you know I heard it on the radio and you know somehow or another my 
my mind basically pictures me listening to the song like many years ago when I was a kid watching um, the Moody Blues live at the Red Rocks in uh, Colorado back in 93, I think it was. So, um, so it it brought it brought back quite a bit of memories from watching that, even though even though as a kid I was basically like, uh, the Moody Blues, uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's uh, my my father. My father was, I suppose, uh, I don't know, either my my father or my mother was basically pretty much into the Moody Blues, uh, just about as much as me, but somehow, was, basically my mind remembered, oh yeah, that's Tuesday afternoon from that, from, from that live um, video from the Red Rocks in uh, Colorado. I th- try to remember what... Try to remember what the orchestra was that they did that with. I think it was like Colorado, Colorado Orchestra, or something like that. Uh, I, I, I'd have to check. But um, so that's that really was basically, um, basically the beginning of something very, very amazing, and. Ten years later, I have like about 4,800 songs on on my iTunes library, and and probably so many more along with that. So I could easily like at least you know 500 song, 5,000 songs easily, probably. But you know, I think I think every year, basically music. For me, my music tastes get even more, even more expanding. You know, um, you know, there's there's been songs um, where the place I work, which is the Fargo Country Club, um, I've listened, I've been listening to songs working there that I haven't heard in probably years, years. Um, Trying to think of some examples. Um, um, uh, definitely some '90s '90s songs. Um, um, Hootie and the Blowfish. Hootie, Hootie and the Blowfish is one. Um, uh, let's see what was the song. Um, uh, I only want to be with you. Uh, it's Definitely a good song. I I like the I like Cootie and the Blowfish too. But um, if you really want to get into like like nineties nineties music, basically music before NSYNC, uh, Backstreet Boys bursted onto the scene. Basically, that 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 part of the nineties was basically pretty pretty good. Um, See uh, Jesus Jones right here right now. That's also one one of the best songs in the '90s. Um, Duncan Sheik. Uh, um, Duncan Sheik is right up there. Um, that's uh, uh, Jim Blossom. Jim Blossoms though. I'm trying to think if he's '90s or not, but I think I, if I remember right, he's '90s. But. Um, you know, um, basically for me, the best decade that I like for music is basically 80s. Even though, even though my favorite band of all time is the Beatles, and uh, I don't know, th- to me the to me the 80s seemed a little bit more diverse than the 60s, where you basically had the Beatles. You know, somehow, some way, somewhere in the charts, basically every single week in the year, and uh, I don't know. It's it's just it just seemed like a disparity. Like in the '80s, you know, you had at least I'm not going Michael Jackson song somehow in in the charts in the '80s. You know, at least a good a good chunk of the year. But you know, 
if you have the Beatles, it's like, you know, yeah, you can have I Want to Hold Your Hand, Can't Buy Me Love. This is going to be basically eh, all stacked together in one year. And I don't know, it just doesn't happen that, that way anymore. I don't, I don't think I don't think you'll ever see a band like the Beatles become chart toppers like they did in, in their Beatlemania years from 1962 to 66. It just just doesn't happen that way anymore. But of course, I'm not saying that their later years from 1967 to 70 weren't chart topping years as well. But you know. Basically, when Beatlemania happened, basically, <laughs> the music world basically changed after that, you know. From February 7th, 1964 on, basically, the whole world of music never, was never the same again. You know, you had the, certainly the doo-wop groups like, um, uh, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to remember what that band was called. Um, um, uh, at the Hop. I song, I songs like the At the Hop. Um, like, basically, just basically, like, um, um, you know, songs that you probably hear on a jukebox from 63 before, before then. Um, like Roy Orbison, um, uh, probably some early Beach Boys from 62, like Surf and Safari, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, it's, in the 80s, I think pretty much the 80s is probably my most favorite decade. The 60s is pretty much a very, very close second. 70s, I suppose. Um, 50s, probably 4th, you know, um, 50s, I guess maybe 90s too, but I'm, I, I'm, I am not really sure, but there's, there's just so much music out there, it's like, it's, like, if you really think about it, like, the one song of, like, if you have one song of an artist, like, um, Ario's B Wagon, just think of so many other songs that they did during the 80s or 70s, 80s, and 90s. It's just absolutely amazing how much music is out there, as well as the other kinds of music like jazz rock, um, indie jazz, independent rock, you know, classic rock. You know, there's so much. There's so much music out there that I don't think you could never ever get too much music. Ah, maybe that was, maybe that's kind of a guy answer for the ladies answer for them to say that, you know, you can never have too many shoes. You can never have too many shoes. Well, you can tell your girlfriend or your wife and you can tell them, well, you can never have too many, too much music, you know. So, so if you you can pretty much come back, come back with that kind of answer, but but for her response, I'm I'm not really sure what she would say after that. But I'm I'm not held responsible for what what happens what happens to what happens to you. So so anyway, um, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna talk about music a little bit more. But for you know, kind of for starters, I think this is pretty much what I'm going to talk about, at least for this part of the podcast. Maybe episode, later episodes, I will probably talk a little bit about it more. But it's definitely one of my more favorite subjects, other than sports and movies and such. But all right, uh, let's uh, get back to the next topic. All right, I'm pretty sure. Quite a few of you have heard about the Dwight Howard trade uh, over this past weekend. Um, basically, my take on this was that you know, it, you know, you knew it was going to happen sooner or later that 
Dwight Howard was going to leave the Magic and basically leave that team basically in a wake that they had been trying to recover since uh, Shaquille O'Neal went to the Lakers, um, oddly enough. <laughs> you know, he was a big man center um, from LSU, and he was drafted by the Magic, and then he leaves the Magic to go help Kobe Bryant get um, three titles in the late 90s and early 2000s. And... And basically left the Magic, like, trying to recover from that for at least a good um, eight years, eight years, ten years. And then Dwight Howard gets drafted by the Magic and then spends about a good five, six years with them. And then he wants out of Orlando because, you know, management hasn't been really that great. And... And then they trade him to the Lakers and say, I was trying to think, um, I'm trying to remember if if it was their GM, and but he says it was like a, basically a good move for them. And I'm like, what? How is this a good move when you got rid of the only star player on your, your team? <laughs> it has been basically great for you over the past five, six years. And... And now you're basically back to square one when Shaquille O'Neal left, left you guys. And yeah, it's 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 not a pretty picture, I suppose. But but basically, the what the winners are basically are obviously the Lakers. Um, they get Dwight Howard, who certainly has been injured over a good while now, and. You know, I think he's definitely quite a bit of the um, rebounding machine. Um, you know, I think he can put quite a bit of them, quite could quite, <clears throat> excuse me, could put quite a bit of numbers um, for the Lakers. Uh, definitely points, um, certainly assists, assists. He's he's definitely a big man, so he can definitely get quite a bit of rebounds for you. Um, Lakers also picked up Steve Nash. Uh, I think it was free agency. So then you have Kobe Bryant, and then you somehow keep Paul Gasol in the lineup, and then you have Metal World Peace. So if if you're a Lakers fan, which I absolutely hate the Lakers, and with with basically passion, basically because there are no lakes in Los Angeles and basically the Lakers can get basically any player that they want and almost guarantee championship by buying off. But basically the Lakers are kind of like the New York Yankees of uh, the NBA. So, so somehow if you get all those players and try to at least alarm uh, Lamar no wait, no, it was not Lamar. He he got traded later on the season, but um, uh, Bynum, Bynum got traded to the 76ers, which I think is definitely a quite a good move for 76ers. They, you know, they definitely have a, got quite a bit of a star in Bynum, but how is his situation, his personality, going to be in Philadelphia? Yeah. Who knows? He he was he was he grew up in uh, Philadelphia, so we'll I guess we'll have to see what happens what happens there. Um, uh, some losers in in this trade are obviously the Magic, who basically lose Dwight Howard. Um. um see what else um the i suppose the the heat are probably are also probably one of the biggest losers in in this deal basically because of um basically they have a competitor in the Lakers that will definitely give them quite a bit of a challenge uh, for a repeat title, 
and you know it's I'm not I'm not saying that basically that there's going to be a Lakers Heat Heat finals. It's you know it's definitely more possible, and it's definitely quite a good matchup. I think. Um, I mean, you have definitely a good uh, two titans of the NBA right now with um, the Heat winning their second title in in six years, and then you have the Lakers, who have had the legendary mystique since their days in Minneapolis when they were the Minneapolis Lakers in the 40s and 50s, and then they moved to Los Angeles and basically start one of the biggest rivalries in all sports with the Celtics, which I actually I actually follow the Celtics quite a bit. But you know, it's I think I think the Lakers Celtics rivalry is nothing nothing quite like quite like it and in in professional sports. It's definitely right up there with uh Red Sox Yankees, um um um, Packers, Bears, you know, certainly one of the more higher echelon of um, of United States professional sports rivalries. And of course, you can probably also say Ohio State, Michigan, but that's college, and so yeah. Um, and some other losers in this trade, uh, the Houston Rockets. Basically, they were in one of the talks to um, bring Chris Paul to the Lakers back in uh, earlier in the fall back in December which unfortunately was uh, struck down by Dan David Stern uh, which the league um, owned the Ra or owned the Hornets excuse me uh, the New Orleans Hornets but um, some other losers, you can definitely make a case for the Brooklyn Nets, who were definitely quite the um, high in the sweepstakes of um, uh, Dwight Howard, which which basically the talks with the Brooklyn Nets and the Magic basically kind of basically kind of crumbled down uh, about a few, about a month ago or so. So um, that's basically. The biggest winners and losers of this trade. You know, am I happy about it uh, as a T Bulls fan? Uh, no, no, I'm not happy about it because basically it means less wins for us and more losses for us because we have to play against the Lakers at least three to four times uh, a year, basically because they're in the same conference as us and it's. For for the small small market teams that are looking for a chance to go to the playoffs, it's definitely a lot less of a chance. And I still I still like the NBA, but you know their 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 parity in the league is basically a joke when it comes to the uh, other leagues like the NFL or the NHL or Major League Baseball, but. It's you know I still like the NBA. So anyway, uh, let's get to the next topic or so. Well, it looks like football is pretty much back in business. Well, preseason-wise, I suppose, but uh, the Packers played their first preseason game against the San Diego Chargers at Qualcomm Stadium uh, about uh, at least a few days ago. Um, you know, I'm not going to break down every single play from the game, but essentially the the final score from that game was the Chargers 21, the Packers 13, and basically for a preseason game, it was actually not that bad. You know, I didn't watch the game because unfortunately I, w I was at work and you know it's, it w it was basically sloppy but it was it was sloppy on both teams but you know it was kind of expected for at least the first pre preseason game 
you know, you had the just a little bit of some rust from the off season and you know, it's 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 fine, but if it was a regular season game it boy, boy, I'm pretty sure their coaches would have been pretty much steamed steamed about uh, about them and basically practice would have been a lot more longer <laughs> than it would be but um you know probably the biggest highlights of the game was uh the first uh female official which was a line judge uh by the name of Shannon Easton and she becomes the first woman uh, official to um, referee a, a NFL game in basically the long history of the NFL, which is about about 93 years. So it's so it's definitely quite an accomplishment. Hey, um, some people were kind of questioning her calls some of the game, according to. Uh, ESPN.com, which I'm basically getting all most of this information from, but you know, I think I think it's something to be very proud of if you're a if you're a woman who loves uh, the NFL. It's definitely quite a step up for the league to have first uh, female referee or official uh, calling the game. So. Um, you know, the I'm basically gonna stick to the Packers kind of um, stats. Uh, basically, Graham Harrell was basically the second uh, second string quarterback. He was basically 15 for 27 for 135 yards and a touchdown, uh, while Aaron Rodgers was two for eight for 16 yards and an interception. And basically for rushing was not that much of um numbers. Um you know, James Starks had five carries for sixteen yards and uh Tyler had thirteen carries for thirty two yards and touchdown and and basically Randall Cobb who I think I definitely think Randall Cobb is definitely gonna be a much improved player from his uh rookie year. Uh, last year, he he basically had four catches for 58 yards and a touchdown. So, you know, it, for turnovers-wise, if it was a regular season game, I I think the Packers would have lost easily by, um, easily lost by 14 or more. But if, since it was kind of more of a preseason game. It was less more of a score differential. You know, I think I think in terms for the Packers for the rest of the preseason, I think it's definitely a, a step up. You know, you have McCarthy that will basically um, discipline them about um, um, on them on turnovers. You know, uh, if I remember right, uh, tackling. Tackling has been quite an issue for our defense, so he'll probably drill them on tackling um, stances and improving their tackling. So, you know, I think McCarthy is a great coach. Um, so I think the more at-pressure coach is uh, Dom Capers, you know, who basically had a pretty good defense for the uh, Super Bowl year and basically had a lackluster performance for the defense last year and I don't want, I don't want to say that it's entirely his fault but you know it's it, the players the players have to do a lot better and I think I think our pass rush was very lacking last season you know if if our pass rushers get uh, penetration and pressure the quarterback, it makes our makes the rest of the defense so much better because the pressured quarterback will 
make decisions, rush decisions, and rush, and those rush decisions will mean drop passes, uh, deflected balls, or even better interceptions. So, you know, at the, in terms of first game, I think it was pretty pretty good. So, um, can't wait to for the next uh, preseason game. So. Uh, let's on, get on to the next subject. Alright, uh, well, this is going to be the last topic for this part two of this podcast, but, um, you know, about about a week ago, um, one of my friends on Facebook was uh, talking about how how much of society he, society has gone down. And you know, it certainly has spoken quite a bit of truth for me. Um, you know, it basically, just to paraphrase, par- par- paraphrase it. And basically, he was talking about how, how the more of the, um, um, if you do something uh, like against um, society, you know, kind of basically, you get rewarded for it, and basically. And you know, certainly it spoke quite a bit of truth for me because it's it certainly seemed to be the case, you know, this over these past few years, you know, as do do I believe them society is heading down to a standstill, you know, like for the for the bad. You know, it's 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 definitely definitely a cause for concern and um i just i just kind of want to talk about my how i feel about you know how my role on life my the meaning of life for me should be um you know you know it seems like more more today of society you have you know if you talk big you know you if you talk big, you you're basically strong with no emotion. You're basically, you know, you're looked at as being a hero for society. Basically, have no emotion and basically talking all the time, being loud and cocky, you know, and all that stuff. But it's it's like you know, I don't, I just don't want to be that and be that. You know, it's it's something that I have no need to want to be. You know, I'm I'm happy with um, being kind of the more of the under the radar kind of guy. You know, under the radar, hardworking. You know, kind of more of the bringing back the blue white collar um, image of. Of society, you know, there's not enough. There needs to be a lot more of the blue white collar guys, you know. I think there should be kind of a good mix of those kind of people around, you know, if you know what I mean. Um, basically, just the best, um, best of those both worlds can basically bring quite a bit uh, more to society, you know. You know, basically, you know, people people lie just to get up in life, you know. But it's, you know, I think it's basically um, trying to gather my thoughts here. But, um, you know, I just don't want to be be that be that kind of be that kind of guy that's the wants to be the liar to get up on life, you know, to cheap cheap off people. Um, you know, I prefer to um, do the heavy lifting, the, you know, the heavy lifting, the hard work, because certainly I believe that if you work hard, basically the whole entire world will will come to you, you know. Basically good things will happen if you if you work hard, you strive hard. And if you do, well, go for good for you, you know. Uh all the best. 
you know, to you, but, you know, I prefer to be the kind of under the radar kind of guy, just to, because I don't, I certainly don't need the, the enough attention. I don't, I don't necessarily need the whole entire world to know everything, every single thing about me, even though I like to do this podcast, but that's a whole entire thing, different thing uh, to me, but it's, I don't know if I'm making sense to, to you or, or not, but it's, it's, uh, it's something that I hold very, very, very dear to me, and, and I don't, don't want to be something that, I don't want, I don't want to be someone that I'm not, you know, I want to be, to be respected, but certainly to, oh my goodness, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm watching the, um, while I'm, while I'm doing this podcast, I'm watching the, uh, Twins Rays, Rays game, and basically one of the Rays players was caught stealing, and he was basically running, running back and forth, back and forth, in between the infielders, and eventually, eventually, the Twins got him, so, <laughs> it's kind of one of the more funny plays in baseball, so, um, so, anyway, uh, back to subject. You know, you know, it's. I don't. Know, I don't need to be loud. I. I hate. I hate loud people that. That can't shut up for at least. At least one good minute. It's like, blah blah blah. I'm. I'm. I look at me. I'm awesome. Look at me. I'm driving. I'm driving the car, a sports car. You know. Look at me at this. Uh, this. At the stop sign. I'm not even bothered to stop. But, you know. You know, I prefer to follow the rules, you know, which I prefer to follow the rules, you know, because, you know, if you, you know, if you follow the rules, you, you basically, you won't have to, you know, you won't get into much trouble because, you know, if you, if you do that and you pretty much lie about it, someone, someone's going to find out sooner or later about it, so... Why, why bother, why bother getting in trouble and lying about it, you know, so, you know, I, I don't want to say that I'm a nice guy, you know, because nice guys are basically, um, uh, you know, nice guys are certainly just not, you basically have to be more than that, you know, it's, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm a nice guy, you know, I, so it's like, well, yeah, but what? So, so you're a nice guy, so, what else, what else, what else is in, what else is you, so, you know, I, th- I think I'm, I think I'm a good guy, so, that pretty much likes to re- respect people, um, for the, who they are, you know, I'm, I'm totally for gay marriage, you know, I certainly, um, I like, you know, I like gay people, but, but, you know, I'm straight, and I, I like girls, so, I have absolutely utmost respect for, um, gay and lesbian people, and certainly transsexuals, you know, I mean, they get so much, um, hate that you just have to feel so sorry for them, I mean, it wasn't. It's not their choice for them to to be gay, lesbian, or or transsexual or bisexual, you know, or anything like that. But it's you know they deal with quite a bit, quite a bit of stuff. So it's you know I'm I'm pretty I'm I'm happy with with who I am as a human being as such, but. Um, um, you know, I'll talk about, more about this in 
later podcasts, but um, but I'm pretty much out of time for now, so usually I like to do these podcasts at least for about 30 to 40 minutes uh, maximum, so so we'll probably talk to you all later this week. Um, episode 4 is probably coming up pretty soon, so um, you know, um, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, uh, email me at tommusicfan19 at gmail.com. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. Just look for Darth Tom, and if you find a picture with a red dragon on it, that's a has the name of Tom Wagner on it. So, you know, definitely go ahead and follow me. I'll I'll certainly follow you back. I'm certainly definitely not one of those people with the uh, blue check mark who basically don't bother following people. So, you know, I'm definitely a team of team follow back. So, definitely go ahead and follow me. I'll I'll follow you any any time. So. So, episode four, probably sometime later this week. Uh, until that time, I am Tom Wagner. I am out of here. Peace. <laughs>